Hi folks, I want to do one last video on the orbit stabilizer theorem where uh, we'll state it formally and then we'll give a proof sketch. So the orbit stabilizer theorem says the following. If G is a finite group of permutations of some set S, then for any element I in that set S, we can use that element I to compute the size of G, the, the group of permutations. So the size of G, is just the size of the stabilizer of I times the size of the orbit of I. The stabilizer is a collection of group elements. It's actually a subgroup of G, and it's all of the elements in the group that fix I. The orbit of I is a subset of S, our set, and it's all the places that element I can be mapped after applying elements in G. So we discussed a couple examples. We could use this to count the number of rotational symmetries of the cube. We did this in two ways. One way we thought of the um, set S as our six faces. And then if we fix a face I, you know, that face could be mapped by a rotation onto any of the other six faces. So in this count, the size of the orbit was six because I fix a face, it could be mapped to any of the six others. The size of the stabilizer of this face was four, because there are four rotations that map that face onto itself. All right, and so that we found that the size of the, the group was 24. Another way that we counted that the size of rotational symmetries was 24 is that we thought of the rotations as acting on the set S of vertices, okay? So now each rotation, we think of it as moving these vertices around. And so there's a rotation that can take any fixed vertex to any other. So the size of the orbit of any vertex is now eight, okay? Whereas the size of the stabilizer changes, if I fix, if I wanna count the number of rotations that fix this front vertex, well, there's only three. You know, this white face could either be um, stay put or map up here. Let me try this again. <laughs> if I'm fixing this front vertex, then the white face could either map to the bottom left or to the bottom right, or it could stay put. There's only three rotations that fix this front vertex. So the stabilizer of this front vertex is three, three rotations that fix this front vertex. So we then got 24 rotational symmetries this time as eight times three. We also talked about the soccer ball. So what's the group of rotational symmetries of the soccer ball? One way we counted this is thinking of the rotations as on the soccer ball as acting on the pentagons. And so um, a rotation can take one pentagon to any other pentagon, and there's 12 pentagons in, in total. So the size of our, our orbit was 12, any pentagon can go get mapped to any of the 12 others. And the size of the stabilizer was five. There are five rotations fixing any pentagon. So we got 60 as our group of rotations of the soccer ball. You could also think of the set S as the hexagons. Um, there's 20 hexagons and, and any hexagon can get mapped to any other. So the size of our orbit is 20. The size of the stabilizer was three. There's only three rotations of this hexagon that, that fix the stitching pattern. You know, you have to map um, these pentagons uh, onto pentagons when I rotate around this hexagon here. So that's why there's only three um, rotations that fix any given hexagon, such as this hexagon right here. Okay. One other example I made a little bit more explicit. So G was the following subgroup of size six. Um, here are the six elements. They're all elements in, um, in S8, the uh, permutation group of eight elements. But I'm not considering all of S8. My group G that I'm considering is a subgroup of size six. So we computed these stabilizers and the orbits for a couple different elements. 
For some of the elements like element one, the stabilizer had size two and the orbit had size three. And so that we, we got that the size of the group was six equals um, three times two. Whereas for this other element seven, the stabilizer had size three, whereas the orbit had size two. So we still have six as being equal to three times two, but now it would be in the opposite order. Okay, so we've now stated the orbit stabilizer theorem precisely. The size of a group of permutations is equal to, well, consider any element i in your set that's being permuted, and the size of the group of permutations is the size of the stabilizer of i times the size of the orbit of i. Stated it, the theorem precisely, given some examples. Let me now give you the proof sketch. So the first and maybe the most important step in this proof is to observe that the stabilizer is always a subgroup of G. So let me outline this only a little bit. What does it mean to be in the stabilizer of, of I? It means that phi of I is equal to I. <laughs> you, you stabilize the ith face, right? You map the ith face onto itself. So now if I had not only phi, but also phi prime that was in the stabilizer, certainly we would have phi prime also fixing i. Okay. What this allows us to observe is, well, Let's consider phi prime composed with phi. What happens when I apply that to i? I get phi prime of phi of i, but phi of i is just i, and now phi prime of i is just i. So what we've observed is that phi prime composed with phi is in the stabilizer. Because it fixes i. So if I have two elements in the stabilizer, then their product is in the stabilizer. It's also true that if I have an element in the stabilizer, then its inverse permutation is also in the stabilizer. And that's essentially what you need to show that the stabilizer is a subgroup. It's a non-empty set closed under products, as we've observed, and it's also closed under taking inverses. So once you have a subgroup, the stabilizer is a subgroup of this larger group G, Lagrange's theorem click, kicks in. Lagrange's theorem says that the size of a subgroup always divides evenly into the size of a finite group. G is a finite group and the stabilizer is a subgroup. So Lagrange's theorem says we could write the size of G as the size of the stabilizer times some integer. What was that integer? That integer was the number of cosets of the stabilizer, or more generally, the subgroup. Okay. So Lagrange's theorem says, not only does the subgroup divide evenly into the group, but the number of times it divides in is equal to the number of cosets it has. You might remember this picture. Okay, here's a nice simple group, Z mod 12Z. It has 12 elements. Consider this subgroup generated by three. Okay, it has four elements, zero, three, six, and nine. How did we show that four divided evenly into 12? Well, we observed that the group can be uh, divided up into disjoint pieces all of the same size. And those disjoint pieces were the cosets of the subgroup. So here are the various cosets. Okay. And so not only did we get that 12 was divisible by four, 
the size of the group was divisible by the size of the subgroup. But we also got 12 was equal to three times four, or where three was the number of cosets. So the size of this larger group was equal to the number of cosets, three, times the size of the subgroup or the size of each coset, which was four. So that's what I have here. The size of this group of permutations is equal to the size of the subgroup times the number of its cosets. So now the last thing we need to do to get the orbit stabilizer theorem is just observe that the number of cosets is the same as the size of the orbit. Okay, and that is true. We won't give a full proof, but the number of cosets of the stabilizer in G is equal to the size of the orbit of this element I. Right. Okay. So then we can plug, plug this in to obtain Lagrange's theorem. So let's just walk through some intuition for that. So let's look at this group of size 24, all rotational symmetries of the cube. Let's fix this white face on the right. That's going to be I, element I, in the set of faces. And the, any rotation is permuting these faces. So the stabilizer of this face is just four rotations, do nothing or 90 degrees or 180 degrees or 270 degrees about this particular axis through the space. Okay. What are the cosets? What do the cosets of this subgroup look like? The cosets are attained not by looking at these four rotations, okay, but you can sort of rotate your axis and then look at those four rotations, etc. You know, or, or rotate your axis again and look at these four rotations. All right. So it turns out that the number of cosets is just going to be the same as the number of places you can move this white face. And there's six different faces here. That's the orbit of this face. And so there are going to be you know, six different faces that we can map this particular face onto. And it turns out that will be the same as the number of cosets of this subgroup, which is the stabilizer. That's very much just intuitive, but, but, um, but I'll leave it there. So in summary, the orbit stabilizer theorem is a great way for counting sizes of groups. You want to take your finite group and realize it as some group of permutations of some object. So rotation groups, you might realize as permutations of faces or vertices. And then fix any element in your set that's being permuted, like fix any face. And then the size of the group of rotations is the, stabilize, the size of the stabilizer times the size of the orbit. And the main way we proved this is we realized that the stabilizer was a subgroup. So then Lagrange's theorem told us that the larger group was equal to the size of the stabilizer times the number of cosets. And then it turns out that the number of cosets is just equal to the orbit of that height face. We'll end it there. Thanks so much for your time and attention.